All right, welcome. It's indisputable, I'm your host Rashad Richard. Good to be with you, I have a lot on the agenda today. Breaking down news of the day, none other than mayor of Enfield, North Carolina, ideal brother and founder of Black Male Voter Project, Mondale Robinson. It is going to be a fascinating analysis. And we have in the bullpen, Marinda Spent, she's new. She comes from Young Voices, we're going, we're going to talk about Donald Trump, some other things. Top story of the day, all right, so the person who was killed by the Marine veteran was threatening according to the Marine. Here's the video that surfaced of Mr. Neely and what he was actually doing on that subway, here it is. Put up the picture, what happened to Mr. Neely later. I want you to see that, I want you to look at that. Couple of things I want you to remember. Number one, multiple individuals did try to stop Mr. Neely from dying. Multiple witnesses have come forward and said, Mr. Neely was not threatening nor putting anyone in danger. As a matter of fact, it was the killer who was agitated and became the aggressor. Multiple individuals also attempted to stop and to check For Mr. Neely, they attempted to stop these individuals from simply surrounding him. They were told to step back. What you saw, ladies and gentlemen, was a killing by by an individual who's trained to kill. Johnny Grima, who is a well-known homeless activist in the city and a former resident of Anarchy Row. Just happened to be traveling on the same train when Mr. Neely, 30 years of age, was put into a headlock by ex-Marine Daniel Penny. Grima has slammed the attack as racist, saying that there was no consideration for Neely's life because he was black, homeless, and poor. He recalled how he told people to put the man on his side to stop him from choking on his own spit. But he was told to stop by Penny as he watched the life drain from Mr. Neely's eyes on the F train. In a video of the incident, Grima can be heard and seen moments after Neely stopped moving. He's now admitted he regrets walking away from the scene. The witness was heard saying, and I quote, don't put him on his back though. He might choke on his own spit, put him on his side, okay? now. Let's talk about the real problem. Obviously, we saw a murder. Obviously, we saw a man get exterminated by somebody else. Unarmed, no threat to anyone. And this person isn't even a cop. He's not sworn to do anything. He's not even active military. But he's getting treatment as if somehow his actions are favored. I guarantee you, if Mr. Neely would have felt threatened by Mr. Penny, and did the same thing, the result would be different. Mr. Neely would be in jail. He would be facing murder charges, not manslaughter. And there would be no $2 million raised for Mr. Neely. Let's put it up. Daniel Penny's legal defense fund. As of Sunday night, Daniel Penny's lawyers have already crowdfunded nearly $2 million for his legal defense using page from the conservative centered Go find me alternative gives E N D G O. Give sin go. A number of figures on the right have been promoting the effort, not just defending Penny, but also championing him and what he said. Late Friday, respective GOP presidential candidate Ron DeSatan decided to link to the page in a tweet. 
and referred to Mr. Penny as a good Samaritan. Do you understand this? He called him a good Samaritan. DeSantis did not say we need to wait on the outcome of the investigation. The governor of Florida did not say we need to withhold judgment because a man's life has been ceased by another human being. No, you did not hear any of that. He tweeted, and I'm sure he probably gave money or at least contributed to the effort. Why has Mr. Penny raised $2 million in days? Is it because he needs the money or he was asking for it? No. Is it because he's a police officer? He's not. Is it because he's a military veteran? No. It is because he killed a black man, it was recorded, and they want him to get away with it. Do you understand? That's what this is about. So they are going to live vicariously through him. He becomes their proxy champion. This is sick as hell. Mr. Mayor, thoughts here? Uh, Doc, it's sick as hell and it's America as hell. Yeah. Right, this is as American as it can be. This is as American as apple pie. Think of think of Cal Rittenhouse shot two people in Kenosha, raised a bunch of money, and walked scot free. Walked right past the police after they had reports of somebody with a, a long gun shooting and murdering two people. This man literally murdered someone. You, if you are a marine, and I know because I am one, right, you right. choke someone to death. You already know how to kill people. You are a trained murderer. Period. You are trained to kill. One shot, one kill is the Marine Corps slogan. This idea that this person wasn't charged for murder as we saw it on video, as witnesses are explaining, this was a murder of someone who was handicapped, mentally handicapped. And it's absolutely disgusting that we knew everything about Jordan and nothing about this Marine for long times. And he had the time to sit at home and decide when he was gonna turn himself in. This is all the all of the features that remind black people that America has a high tolerance for our pain. And also there's still bounty on our head. Right now this man has $2 million and it's gonna go up. You you, you, you posed a wonderful question about the Santez, him, him putting up here, whether he contributed or not, him calling this person a good Samaritan mm-hmm. plays into this idea that itself is capital. You got that's a right, presidential right. candidate saying that you are a good Samaritan, that is political capital. And when you share that link, even if people that did not or would not have given, they're more likely to give now because you just said this person did nothing wrong. And it's that level of disdain for black people that has been in America, that is a long straight in America that we can't really explain unless we tell the truth about our history and what's happening now. And that's that we still live a life that shows us that we're second class citizens in this country. If a person cannot respect your sensitivities publicly, don't expect them to respect your values in private. Policy come from individuals like DeSantis and others, but they show you who they are before they get into the room. Our job is to stop them from getting into that room. Houston's manager, or Houston's, is being sued. Why? Because they brought the police in, according to the allegation, to kick out a black couple because somebody said they smelled like marijuana, even though the couple maintains. Nope, we don't do that. Let's put up the picture full mass. Hell of a thing. The Chandria Bass and Dewan Brown have filed a lawsuit after being escorted out of a Houston's restaurant by police in Memphis, Tennessee. According to the complaint filed on May 11th, last summer, the couple was accused of smelling like marijuana. Accused by the manager while being told to leave the establishment. So let me get into the background. According to the lawsuit, Ms. Bass and Mr. Brown were visiting the Houstons located at 5000 Poplar Avenue in Memphis on or around August 7, 2022 from Mississippi. After they had been seated at the table with Brown's mother and cousin, the manager came by their table and asked them to leave while claiming they smelled like weed. A couple claimed or the couple claimed They knew they did not smell like marijuana and remained seated. The complaint noted that the manager identified as Kayla Hollins. Ms. Hollins later returned to the table with a police officer. So she's bringing a gun to the situation and said, and I quote, I ask you to leave and come back tomorrow because you smell like weed. Police officer then 
escorted the couple out of the restaurant. The restaurant's general manager, his name is Ralph Price, is also named in the lawsuit. Once outside, another officer reportedly admitted to the couple that Ms. Hollins has a history of racism with the restaurant's black clientele and regularly and act this way with uh, towards black patrons, according to the report. Ms. Bass and Brown's attorney, Carlos Moore, says the accusation is clients smell like marijuana is simply not true. While adding there is no evidence that the couple smelled like marijuana at all. He claimed they were racially profiled and humiliated as a result. Moore said his clients are asking for $500,000 each in damages for humiliation and embarrassment. It's called punitive. And then also money for emotional distress and anguish they suffered during the actions of the Houston's manager. Uh, let's put up the attorney. Attorney Carlos Moore uh, said to WHBQ TV, and I quote, Houston um, has a problem talking about the establishment. Uh, she brought a police officer with her. And had them escorted out of the restaurant, embarrassed them in front of his mom and his cousin, entire restaurant, adding, uh, adding now that the lawsuit is filed, Houston's can no longer ignore me. Okay. The lawsuit also accused Houston's of malicious, callous, but bad faith, willful, wanton, and reckless misconduct by refusing to serve the couple and having them removed from the restaurant. Another family says they were also asked to leave the same Houston's around the same month as the couple. Marcus Mosby, who's 28, a veteran police officer, says he and his high school principal wife were asked to leave by the manager after they were accused of what? Smelling like marijuana too. Houston's parent company is Hillstone Restaurant Group. They released a statement claiming they do not discriminate. Quote, while we do not comment on pending litigation, our company does not discriminate. We are proud that guests of all races choose to dine regularly at Houston's Memphis and appreciate our hospitality. Let's go ahead and dissect the ways here. So number one, Houston's, uh, they've had these issues before, okay? Restaurant, even here in Atlanta, similar situation, had race as the center of it, as the focus, all right? So let's talk about the disguised um, discrimination, right? Well, it looks as if based on the pattern that is being established currently, this is a go-to for this particular manager. So the manager goes to another couple according to the report. This is a cop and a principal. The reason why that is important in this case is because police officers are drug tested and principals are drug tested, all right? That's the reason it is important in this context. So if you are accused of smoking marijuana, but you actually have a professional executive level position and you have to maintain a marijuana free life in order to keep that position, well, that becomes germane to the story. Also, same manager, same story, black people both saying that never happened. I never smoked marijuana, all right? As a matter of fact, uh, the young lady said she doesn't smoke at all. Period. So there's no way this was real, right? That is the disguise, what's really at the bottom of it. Intentional discrimination is likely, right? The officer then takes the young lady outside and tells her and Mr. Brown, hey, you know, this person actually does this and she's done it before. Wow. All right. Uh, Mr. Mayor, what are your thoughts on this level of um, proposed discrimination? Man, I, Dr. Richie, I know you are well aware of the story of Ida B. Wells and how she got wildly popular about taking care of black people and looking out for black people. It happened right in Memphis. Her friend owned the People's Grocery right across the street from Will Barrett, who was a white grocer who basically was running a liquor house, an illegal liquor house right across the street in his liquor store and got mad that this black guy was successful running groceries and he acted in this manner. This is another, this is another form while, while uh, Mr. Hobbs, the black grocer in, in in Memphis, then was lynched and killed. This is a form of lynching. I mean, of course, and I know I'm, I'm not trying to be coy, but kicking people out 
this is this is a this is a trauma that we we must re, relive every time this happened. Who who is this manager to say that you smell like marijuana? You know what else smell like marijuana? CBD. You know what? It's legal. So right. this idea that you can use your nose and kick people out because they don't like the way they smell is beyond me. And the idea that the police officer would wait till you took these black people outside instead of checking that white woman inside mm-hmm. and said, hey. You have a history of behaving this way. We will not participate in this racism. That to me is cowardice in a minute. I appreciate them sharing that information because it can be used in their case. But I wish you would have checked that white person. And this is why so many black people find ourselves in in peculiar situations where we are left standing and screaming, looking like we're angry when in actuality the police know exactly what's going on. Yet and still you still move this remove this couple for nothing and you knew it was nothing. Very well said, very well said. We are going to follow this story as the litigation continues. I do expect at some point Houston's to make a statement about this particular manager, especially if more come out. Very sad story, but definitely a hero cop. Let's put her up full mass, so sad. A pit bull type dog as it is being described. In Indiana, attacked and killed Miss Tamika White. Miss White was a Marion County Sheriff's Office deputy. She was trying to protect her small child, she's the mother, from the dog. And the dog killed Miss White. They called her a bright light and a joy to be around. Let me give you as much background as we have, little is known about the attack that happened on Tuesday, May 9th at Miss White's home. However, by the time the Indianapolis police arrived at the residence, the 46 year old peace officer, she died shortly at, she died at the scene of the incident. The aggressive animal had mauled both White and her son according to WTHR. There's a police report, the police report says the child knocked on his neighbor's door to find help after the attack. Eventually someone called 911 and the police arrived shortly after 8 p.m. Officers reported that upon entering the home and moving toward White as she lay in the garage, the dog charged at them. One of the responding officers fatally shot the animal. Although the incident happened in her home, the dog did not belong to Officer White. The deputy reportedly owned a dog herself and was dog sitting three others for someone she knew. IEMS and Indianapolis fire crews were called to the scene to assist in providing medical attention. While the officers did not arrive in time to save Deputy White, they were able to support her six year old son. They took him to a local hospital for treatment for the bites. He is now recovering from non life threatening injuries because his mama saved him. Witnesses described the child is in shock, CBS 4 Indy reported. After the incident, the Indianapolis Metropolitan Police Department released a statement saying the officers have identified who owned the animal. Reports say a man arrived at White's house and told police his girlfriend owned the dogs and that he wanted to take the dogs home with him. The officers refused his request and allowed the city's animal services to seize the animals pending their investigation into what happened here. It has since been reported the animal services agency was called to White's house on a Saturday, May 6, around 3 p.m. Local station WTHR reported that. Animal control was answering a report of two fightful dogs running loose in the community, demonstrating aggressive behavior. Outside of the individual's query, no additional information about the owner was offered to the press. Deputy White was a bright light to all who knew her. We are immensely grateful for her nearly 17 years of service to our agency. We will work to uphold her legacy as a courageous and dedicated public servant, says Sheriff Carrie Forrestal. Let's put up this picture again. This story touched me, touched me because you can't imagine what was going through her mind trying to save her son, what was going through her son's mind, seeing his mother being killed. By this dog. And it's so unfortunate because based on the report, this all was avoidable if services properly aligned. Because a report, a proper report 
was a given to animal control, but no query follow up is available. Mr. Mayor, this is really a policy question about local ordinance and local government. You as a mayor, you have to oversee uh, these local ordinances that deal with safety and the public all the time. What could have been done differently here to save this heroic deputy who saved the son, who saved the life of her son? Yeah, I don't know if um, this is a tragic story, and I, and I definitely understand why you were why you touched and shaken by it because we're talking about a six year old watched and tried to save his mom life, and she saved his life by running to a neighbor's house. Um, so that that's the first thing that we have. We're talking about two humans that are forever changed. One is gone, and one watched his mother leave, um, and all because these officers who responded to the first call from this deputy. Uh, did not do their job. I don't know if if it's in in infant. We have a a law that says you cannot have your dog. You can't walk your dog without a leash. These dogs clearly were unleashed. So if this if this gentleman uh, came to the house and said that hey, these are my girlfriend's dog. I want to take them home. Those peace officers or those officers that were the dog animal control should have monitored the neighborhood until those animals were found. Especially when we said two aggressive dogs are walking through the neighborhood. They mm-hmm. should not have went back until they found those dogs or located those dogs. So the idea that there was no follow up with the person who called about two dogs with aggressive behavior roaming the neighborhood is absolutely tragic. And the sad part about it is it could have been even worse had yeah. her, had she not saved or knew how to save her son's life. Yeah. We could have been talking about two lost lives. So this this is a failure of, like you said, policy and also uh, workers at the city level not doing what they were supposed to do as it pertains to making sure you patrol until you know that the, the perimeter is safe and it was clearly not safe. Yeah, so sad, so unfortunate. And from all accounts, she was a good one. She was a good cop. We got more on the other side. It's indisputable. Stick and stand. All right, welcome back. We have a lot of show left. Let me read some of these amazing comments. Kind of press for time. We'll read as many as I can. I'm always good to have your feedback. All right. We got. Okay, uh, don't forget we're still fundraising. We're still fundraising um, for our dear brother who was on the show, was accused wrongly. All right, we're talking about Mr. Sam Randall. He was exonerated after serving 21 years for a crime he never committed. He has been fully exonerated, released from prison, but Sam is currently disabled. He's confined to a bed. He's confined to a bed because according to him, while he was wrongfully incarcerated, the correction officers took him to the yard and they beat him. They paralyzed him in that beating. We want to make sure that we support the family. They're asking for financial contributions of any amount to reach the goal of 100,000. We're securing these payments because he's going to have surgery. In that surgery, after that surgery, he needs a lot of support. He needs daily support. We want to help provide that support if we can. All right, do the best you are able to do. Thank you. Okay, a lot of comments. Biden Flavor Corn Pop says, I just heard that uh, that murdering ex-Marine has now raised over two million in his defense. Just look at look at how fast this amount has been raised. Cannot understand it. That's right. I can't understand it either. I don't seek to. All right. I think I have an idea of why. Just don't understand it. All right, Karen Brandsetter, and what about the guys holding him down? They are just as much part of it. I agree, 100%. They were aiding and abetting, but the fact they weren't even questioned or charged in a serious way, uh, they may not ever be charged. Once again, roles reversed. Black people are doing that to Mr. Penny, an ex-Marine. Come on, everybody will be charged with the same crime. We know that. All right, Tyler Hackner, our gifted one indisputable with Dr. Child Rich membership. We thank you so much for that. Let's go to Twitch. All right. Gal for 71. The thing that pisses me off about this dog killing her is that the dog is going to have to be the one who pays the highest price because it would be put down just because it was probably abused. The dog was shot. Well, one of them. Um, there was another one there, uh, and you're completely correct. I imagine. The owner at some point will be held responsible, but 
hell, they let the guy that knew all the information just walk away, it seems as if. But we will give you updates from that saga. All right, got something for you. Ladies and gentlemen, I wish a Karen would. You want to call the police on them for having a barbecue on a and Sunday? You're going to feel free. Back off! I'm going to tell there's an African American man threatening my life. Go, go, record him, record him, record him, record him. This help me, please help this me. This is not your bike. <laughs> please help me. <laughs> this is not your bike. Please help me, help. Please get off me. Hey, what the Please get off me. Yo, don't nah. let him take him, bro. Now you're not getting the bike, bro. Now you're not getting the bike, bro. Help. You're not getting the bike. Why you took his phone? What's wrong with you? You're not touching his phone. You're not touching his phone. I'm not touching you. You put it in your stomach on my head. My dude, stop, no, my dude, stop. No, 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 I said no, I said sit down. Please, no, 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 that's just my fake client. Guys, this is fake client. Stop fake client. Hey, stop touching me. I'm not touching you. Hold up, hold up. Hey, stop touching me. Stop touching me. Why don't you take this bike? Stop touching me. You're not touching me. I will. I can't. Exactly. So take it. So take it. Stop asking me. Stop asking me. Stop asking me. Stop asking me. Your baby's gonna come out with. Not a tear came down, miss. Not a tear came down. I have the full background on this Karen. The Karenicity is unbelievable. Put up the picture. We got her name, where she works, her boss. I want to remind you of a couple of things that happened in this video. Obviously, it is telling, right? You know, she said, and I quote, you are hurting my fetus, my unborn child. Did you all hear that part? She said that. Why did she say that? Because that bolsters her argument to do what she's attempting to do, which is theft under any other circumstance. We will call this attempted theft if the black male went up to the white female who paid for her opportunity to utilize the device and he decided to grab it and try to take it. We will call that clearly attempted theft. So let's call it as it is. And then when the Karen in question decided to physically um, be combative, well, that's called battery, simple assault. There's more. The white male who responded, I don't think he believes the woman is telling the truth. He doesn't care. He needs them. He wants them to reset so that Karen can get her way. Oh, it's a new day. All right. Sarah Jane Comrie appears to be an employee of the New York City NYC Health Hospitals based on the embroidered health systems logo observed on her scrubs. The hospital prides itself in neonatal care, okay? Her employer put up a statement about the matter. Let me read this statement in full. So they said, and I quote, We have recently become aware of an incident that occurred off campus over the weekend and appears to involve one of our employees. We are sorry this happened and we are reviewing the incident. NYC Health and Hospitals, Bellevue, is committed to providing the highest quality of care to all New Yorkers with dignity, cultural sensitivity, and compassion. Let's put up the CEO. His name is William Hicks. Now, Mr. Hicks, I want to say this. To you directly, sir. I'm sure somebody on your staff will get this to you. We already have massive inequities as it relates to black mothers birthing children. We already have that. When employees like this are exposed and they work at a hospital that specializes in neonatal care, you can understand how we're starting to connect dots, correct, Mr. CEO? It's time to nip this in the bud, sir, and I recommend you do it quickly. Mr. Mayor, what are your thoughts here? 
I, I think these black uh, black young men, specifically the one whose credit card was used to pull this this bike out of the system, uh, was attacked by a pregnant thug. Let's just let's just call it what it is. Had that been had had this been reversed, everybody would have been up in uproar about how these black men have no care for life or people's rights or people's property. But when when it's when it's reversed. We talk about the first white man that ran up and tried to get them to reset the bike. Did you see at the end of the video, the young white man in black ran up aggressive, as aggressive mm-hmm. as I'm assuming that pit bull was in Indiana. This is what happens when white women cry help, even when they don't deserve it. The exploitation of the word help in this case is unbelievable. The fake tears on demand is unbelievable. She should be tried for endangering her fetus, her unborn fetus. She put that child in danger. Cuz had that had that young man re- reacted in a different way when she pushed him for something that he's already used his resources to pay for, it would have been a whole different situation. So she right. should be liable, not just for battery on him, but the, the attempt the battery that she could have caused that fetus. Then she should also be fired. Let's just say it. Who that looks like us? Who what black person want this woman around their newborn child in a neo natives? Ain't no way I would feel comfortable. But like you said, the explanations become blaring when we see these people's behavior. The lack of care for black life. You are threatening a black man's life when you are a white woman screaming to help when you don't need it. Because a cop comes up and they act just like these white men that came up, except for they have guns. So this yeah. woman dangerous. Dangerous, and here's the thing, she knows it. That is why she played that card. She understands the power of her weaponized tears. Okay, we'll bring you updates as it sounds. I'm looking for the hospital to make a response this week. Very sad, I put it up for a mass. A woman who was ran over, okay, will not see justice. Justice will not be permitted in this case, excuse me. Mika J. Westwolf, 22 years of age, was walking home along US Highway 93 on the Flathead Reservation. This was in the early morning hours of March, it was March 31st. Ms. Westwolf was walking toward traffic when a Cadillac Escalade driving north on the highway struck and killed her. Ms. Westwolf was declared dead at the scene. That's according to a Montana Highway Patrol fatal report. Now, this is where it gets it gets complicated for those who want to make it complicated, and it remains simple for those of us who are okay with simple. Tribal police were the first to arrive on the scene, and the Highway Patrol trooper who arrived later filed a fatal crash report listing an unnamed driver as a 28 year old woman from Butte who had two children in the car, a two year old and a four year old. None of the occupants in the car were injured. Alcohol, drugs and speed were not listed as suspected factors in the crash because West Wolf was killed on a highway. Montana Highway Patrol is the lead investigative agency in her particular case. So let's go to Lake County. Lake County, the attorney James Lapotka confirmed that on the same day as West Wolf's death, a suspect was arrested shortly after the crash on suspicion of DUI in Lake County. The suspect, a woman, was booked into the Lake County Jail, but released because the county attorney's office decided there wasn't sufficient evidence to file a DUI charge without the toxicology evidence currently being processed by the state crime lab. He added that the crime lab is taking about eight weeks to process the results. So the attorney confirmed that a woman named Sunny K, all right? Sunny K White is 24 years old and her Cadillac Escalade is being investigated by Montana Highway Patrol as the suspect car involved in hitting the pedestrian on March 31st near Arley. The attorney did not confirm whether White was arrested, or was the arrested DUI suspect, but the victim's family believed the incident could be connected. White is not currently in custody and is not currently facing criminal charges in connection to the death of Ms. Westwell. Alarming note about 
White and her children, according to a missing endangered person advisory issued from the law enforcement agency on April 7th, seven days after the death of Ms. Westwood, White broke into a residence and took her two children, four year old Arian and two year old Nation. Did you hear me? The children are named Arian and Nation. What I'm saying is it looks like she almost got away with killing a native woman, okay? And now this discovery of alleged white supremacy has surfaced. Is there a connection in the police department is my first question as to how does she end up just walking away? There's more. The Montana Standard reported this information to us. The children's ages and genders and whites age and gender match information listed in the fatal crash report. Everything adds up. Here's the family GoFundMe. I want us to help as much as we can. Mika Matters, Justice for Mika, Josephine Westwolf. Um, we're raising money here, do the best you can. Make sure positive vibes, prayer uh, remain with the family. All right, hell of a thing. So here's what I'm seeing here, Mr. Mayor, all right? Now this is speculation, but I've been right about these things before. I'm seeing something that is something that is not right, but it seems like the dots are starting to connect. There's this white supremacist connection. It, it has to run deep for you to, to, to name children Aryan and Asian, okay? That, that's deep, all right? That's deeply rooted. Her getting away with it initially, not being arrested as anybody else would have and staying in jail, the person is dead, right? Uh, this doesn't make sense until you consider that there are connections that are unknown at this moment. Mr. Mayor, what are your thoughts? I, I think also, uh, well, first of all, Miss White is the mother of Aryan Nation, Aryan and Nation. Did she change her name to White as well? Mm. So, uh, if 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 any did they did they also implicate the state's uh, DUI charges because they just said they didn't have sufficient evidence, which means mm -hmm. their standard field test is not sufficient. So everybody that has those charges should be trying to say, hey, that that evidence is not sufficient. If you didn't give me a toxicology test, then it's not sufficient. That's the second thing. Lastly, lastly, where where other than America do you name your church Aryan Nations? Yeah. You can't make this up. The idea, the tolerance for suffering of people of color. Where is where is Miss Westwolf two million dollar raised? She did nothing except for try to walk home and was murdered. I'm going ahead and call it murder. And I know I know legally that's irresponsible, but let's be serious. Let's we see what's happening here. There's a pattern, and not just in not just in this case, but in America, where we see all of these signs. All of these, all of these factors, all of these elements, and we still won't call it racism. We won't call it white supremacy. We won't call it America doing business as usual when we know exactly what it is. And all they're waiting on is for it to get out of our conscious and the next media sensation comes about and this woman will walk free while Miss Westwood family suffer with no justice. Not on our watch though, Mr. Mayor, not on our watch. All right, we got more on the other side. It's indisputable stick and stay. All right, welcome back. We got a lot of show left. Let me read some of these comments. Um, and also remind you of Unbossed video on demand. Let's make it happen. Check out Unbossed with Nina Turner to learn how people can take back control of democracy from corrupt forces in government and media. You can find clips of Unbossed by scanning the QR code or going to youtube.com forward slash Unbossed, T-Y-T. All right, let me read some of these comments. The architect says, when he told her to stop fake crying, then she did. I know, right? It was like, stop fake crying, because obviously he has a view we don't. She stopped. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Anderson, Karen's trying to work up those crocodile tears. Yeah, she was doing a horrible job, obviously. Uh, Shiva Mahadev, how can you literally name your children with hate speech? Exactly. Yep. All right. What if I told you a cop has been arrested for planting drugs on his ex-girlfriend's 
boyfriend. Let's put it up for a mass. Dumbest cop alive. You're looking at him. David Scott Burroughs, a former North Carolina deputy, has been accused of planting heroin and other illicit drugs on his ex girlfriend's new beau. This is in an alleged revenge plot. Um, but guess what? He will face no jail time thanks to the help of the amazing heroic plea deal. He will only serve 24 months on supervised probation, which is also the maximum for certain traffic offenses. David Scott Burroughs was accused of abuse of law enforcement power and planning drugs in Ray Kiefer's car in Anson County. He was charged in April 2019 with making a false police report, obstructing justice, breaking and entering a motor vehicle, possession of heroin, possession of marijuana, possession of methamphetamine. A jury deemed him guilty only of obstruction of justice and possession of heroin, okay? Burroughs avoided what could have been up to 53 months in jail by agreeing to supervised probation mandated anger management counseling and no contact with his ex-girlfriend or her boyfriend as proposed by the district judge, Stephen Futrell. Okay, so let's, let's say what it is, right? He's receiving a deal that nobody else would get, I guarantee. There's no citizen in that community who can commit all of those offenses, uh, plot, strategize, plan, execute, get caught because he's a dumbass, go to trial and literally gets a sweetheart deal because the prosecution sees it going left for the guy. Isn't that something? All right, um, Anson County Sheriff, the Anson County Sheriff, Landrick Reed, who died in September 2022, said previously deputies received a tip about drugs in Kiefer's car. That is the boyfriend of the cop's ex, all right? So they got a tip, this guy got drugs in the car before a traffic stop and it led to his arrest. Those drugs were in the exact same spot the tipster said they would be, according to Sheriff Reed. That was a red flag because anyone selling drugs would not have them Sunday to Wednesday in the same place Sheriff Reed said in 2021. Once again, Sheriff Reed passed away in 2022, but Sheriff Reed was no dummy, okay? He said, wait a minute, we got a tip, it's in the exact same place. Mm, this doesn't seem right, okay? So let's put them up. Um, you have Burroughs along with his parents, grandparents and other family members maintained his innocence with claims that he was being set up by a corrupt system and placed most of the blame on the sheriff. <laughs> this whole town is corrupt, Burroughs father said. The sheriff fired Burroughs immediately after his investigation. So let's go to the boyfriend who was allegedly set up, all right? So he filed a lawsuit in the district court Tuesday reading in part, the facts of this case are simple and terrifying. In an extraordinary abuse of power, ex Anson County Sheriff Deputy David Scott Burroughs wielded his authority as a sworn law enforcement officer to fabricate a crime and frame Ray Kiefer Jr. for a felony drug offense that he did not commit. As a result of Burroughs conduct, Ray Kiefer was arrested and interrogated and suffered hours of psychological trauma before the truth finally came out. Charges were dropped that day without any explanation, according to the lawsuit. There's more. The civil lawsuit filed against Burroughs and four other deputies details incidents not mentioned in this criminal trial. It claims the deputy would cruise through his ex's neighborhood and waltz into events he was not invited to. One night, according to the lawsuit, Officer Burroughs threatened the boyfriend from his patrol car and later lurked outside his ex's bedroom recording sounds of her and Kiefer in bed together. The harassment worsened when Deputy David Spencer, a friend of Burroughs, closely trailed Kiefer's car 
as he drove his girlfriend to work, according to the complaint. On his way home, Spencer returned, this time with his siren and blue lights. Spencer told Kiefer he had been speeding and he smelled marijuana inside the car, according to the lawsuit. The boyfriend said both allegations weren't true. More deputies of federal uh, and a federal agent showed up, and the boyfriend was later handcuffed and put in the sheriff's office SUV, according to the lawsuit. All right. So it seems like a system of corruption here. Obviously, the individual who allegedly did this and has been convicted of much of it uh, won't see any time in jail. Do you think he only did this to his ex-girlfriends, boo? Or do you think he has done this before? See, I believe he's done it before. And I believe he's done it with other people before. And I believe that's the reason why the system has rushed, partly why the system has rushed to give him a deal that nobody else would get. Because he knows where all of the bodies are buried because he helped put them there with others inside of that same system. The best we can do in the court of public opinion is create a level of transparency and outrage when necessary to affect change. I want you to see stories that make you feel something. Sometimes good stories will make you feel great and these kind of stories will make you feel not so great. But what do you do? You have to do something, you gotta move. One of the greatest, one of the most unrecognized um, dynamics of the human existence is feeling uncomfortable. It is not cherished and it should be. I like feeling uncomfortable. I want you to feel uncomfortable because when we are uncomfortable, we change things because we can't live in discomfort forever. Or we go the other route. And we figure out a way to become comfortable with the discomfort, and I don't want that. All right, Mr. Mayor, thoughts here. Listen, Anson County is one of those counties in the part of North Carolina, southeastern part of the state that's majority black. It's one of the few counties in this state with 100 counties that is majority black. I bet you there are people that have been arrested by this officer yeah. that that where drugs were planted on them. This is absolutely mm -hmm. disgusting and it's systematic. We know it is because his friend, another officer showed up to do the same thing he was doing, harass this man, this that boyfriend of his ex. Everybody should be investigated. All of this uh, sounds like corruption to me. And the idea that he's crying, he's the victim of a corrupt system. What he's really saying is America's justice system was never meant to imprison white men. And the fact that he's been arrested for exerting his whiteness is a, is a flaw. And I agree with him in that case. It is right. for white men to be arrested for doing whatever they want to in this yeah. country. We don't have a track record of that. But days of changing, days of changing. What, what happens, what should happen is whatever that bro, that boyfriend charges would have been should be placed on this man. Because the mm. idea that you can walk away yep. 25 months of probation when you almost could have took this man life because heroin carries a big time in North Carolina and most yep. places in this country. He should be facing that much time. This is absolutely disgusting. Like you said, this sweetheart deal comes to this white man in this majority black county. And I bet you black people that have been locked up for being drug dealers have never got a sweetheart deal like this in that county. Yeah, and there are other crimes you have to imagine took place. Where did the cop get all the drugs from? Did he steal it from evidence or did he just go and get it from a drug dealer that he arrested? You, you have to imagine the guy has a stash somewhere, he's operating well outside of the lines here. All right, we'll follow the story, give you updates. Hell of a thing has happened across the United States of America. Multiple, multiple female teachers have been arrested for inappropriate relationships, put up their picture full mass. Look at this, this is a damn shame. These arrests took place over two days. At least six female teachers have been arrested in the US in a span of two days this week for having inappropriate relationships with their students. Kentucky teacher Ellen Shell, 38, was arraigned after prosecutors said she had been intimate with the teens on two separate occasions in July and August of last year. Shell worked as a teacher's aide at two elementary schools prior to that. Put up the next one. Arkansas educator, her name is Heather Hare, 32, was expected to turn herself in Friday for an alleged intimate relationship with a teen student and is now facing a first degree felony assault. I got more, put her up. 
This was a story from last month, Oklahoma teacher and daughter of a local mayor, Emily Hancock, 26 years of age. We covered this, was also arrested after local police were tipped off to her alleged relationship with a student, a former substitute with Wellston Public Schools. Hancock allegedly began communicating with the teen, with the teen last October and eventually began sending the 15 year old inappropriate photos. Let's go to Kristen Gant, 36, an English teacher at a Catholic high school in Des Moines, Iowa. Was added to the tally for allegedly being intimate with a teen student five times inside and outside of her own classroom. Ms. Gant groomed the student over social media according to the report and that surveillance cameras caught them going into a classroom alone with a paper over the window. She has been seen, she has been since, excuse me, fired by the school and will now answer to felony counts of sexual exploitation. In Virginia, Aaliyah Kurtmond, a 33 year old teacher at James Madison High School, was also nabbed for allegedly being intimate with a student over the course of several months. A learning disabilities teacher with Fairfax County School since 2016. She has now been charged with four counts of indecent liberties and being held without bond. There's more. Finally, Ms. Hannah Marth, 26, Pennsylvania. Javelin coach allegedly had been intimate with the teenage child she coached. Martin was arrested after police learned she had engaged in an inappropriate relationship with the Northampton area high school track and field athlete. The 26 year old sent the teen a text May 2021 and invited him to her home where the two allegedly had encounters. Now, uh, we reported on these stories. I'm here on Indisputable, I've always made it very clear. Make sure you keep the lines of communication open with all young people around you, all of them, okay? Because they want to talk, they do. They may not always be listening, but they're always learning. And they know if they can talk to you or not, have that line of communication open. Also schools, local schools, they have to get stronger in their ability to track these things and find these things before they permeate into an epidemic status like they are now. This is happening all over the country. We've reported on them many times. So now you have all of these teachers in the, in the span of two days, actually it's more. These are the ones that we could verify, all right? Okay, Mr. Mayor, thoughts? I mean, a, a teacher and a student, that relationship is one of the safest relationships, supposedly one of the safest sure, relationships. When you hear these things, man, it is it, it hurts your soul because you know you're, you're playing on the emotions of children. And regardless of what people say, a teenager is a child not of age of maturity and these teachers should be punished to the utmost. And I, I, am, I have no remorse for anyone behaving in this manner. It is sad, beyond Agreed. sad, really. Agreed, all right, we'll see if They come up with legislation to address this, all right? Okay, we got more on the other side is indisputable, stick and stay. Put up a picture, what if I told you a biological father gets contacted by his biological daughter years, years later because the daughter was given up for adoption. In her adulthood, she wants to find a father, she finds him. He then violates his own daughter. A woman who was given up for adoption as an infant, tracked down her biological father years later, only to be sexually abused by him in a hotel once they finally met. The unidentified woman was given up for adoption by him, Ronald. Antonor, 53 years of age, a wannabe influencer and pro wrestling manager known as Ron Ratcatcher, according to the smoking gun. I'm going to give you the background to this very sad story. So the daughter traveled to meet her father. This was August 2021 in Florida. At the learning of his identity and connecting with him on social media. According to affidavit shared this week by the site, it's unclear how old the woman was at the time. There, the pair spent the day drinking before going back to a hotel room 
where they both did drugs together. They did acid, that's according to the complaint. The victim stated that as the acid took effect, she became physically unable to resist her dad who then had sex with her while she was laying on the bed. That's according to the complaint also. As the effects of the acid began to wane, the victim was able to flee and immediately contacted her boyfriend who told him what happened according to the document. The boyfriend alerted the hotel and Antoinor became alarmed and fled. When a private security guard arrived according to the documents which added that the dad abandoned the victim once he had his way with her during a post Miranda interview. This father, if you could call him that, made incriminating statements as to what had taken place between himself and the victim, the docs state. The dad who listed an address in Alabama was busted in Clearwater last week and charged with felony sexual battery, felony incest, online record show. He was also charged with misdemeanor possession of drug paraphernalia. It was not immediately clear why he was arrested now for the alleged attack. He remains in custody on bond totaling $302,150, according to records. He has pleaded not guilty to the charges and ordered not to have contact with his daughter, court records show. All right, let's put this um, piece of garbage back up on the screen. I want to highlight the story because, you know, I was a foster child myself. And I was lucky to know my mother, and I'm blessed to know my father. Even then, even back then, I knew who they were, I knew them. Sometimes I went years without having communication with them, but I knew them. There are some situations where there's a reason why you weren't raised by this monster. I'm sorry this happened to you. Obviously, in his old age, he did not get better. All right, Jeff, thoughts here. I'm sorry, this one is beyond my comprehension at this point. I should probably have something better to add or say, but this one is, un- I want to say it was unbelievable. I'm sorry, I wanted to say it was unbelievable. Honestly, we've seen a number of these come up. So, I yeah. God bless that woman. Yeah, um, I want to make sure everybody is aware of who he is. Uh, and the evil that he brings to this world. Okay, the Republican Party is doing it out loud. They are literally saying we're ending diversity inside of the party. We are eliminating groups for black people, for women, and a few others. Let me take you to Kansas GOP, all right? We're gonna go ahead and do this the right way, put them up. Kansas Republicans are moving closer to kicking groups, representing, kicking groups out representing women, black people, Hispanic people. We're talking about black Republicans, Hispanic Republicans. They don't want them anymore. They want them off of the state party's executive board, a move that would consolidate all power of Kansas Republican Party, the state Republican Party into the hands of the new hard right chairman, Mike Brown. You're looking at Mike Brown. The Kansas GOP's rules committee advanced a proposal to change years old party bylaws in an effort to oust several special constituency groups along with the state and federally elected Republican officials from the board who oversees party operations and budgetary decisions. The changes, which will be formally voted on this summer, would likely enhance the ability of the state GOP chairman, Mike Brown, to reshape the entire party in his own image. He is a far right election denier. So what does the election denier need to do first? In order to maintain power, he has to get rid of all of the reasonable people. Who are the reasonable people? Black people, Hispanic people, and women. 
okay? Please understand, that's why he's trying to get rid of those groups. They're reasonable, there's more. Um, the chair of the Kansas Black Republican Council, all right? He's the chairman, okay? Michael Austin, what did Michael say about this? Michael called the proposed rule short-sighted. Short-sighted, sir, is racist, sir, is racist. Do you understand what I'm saying? Uh, brother, it is racist as hell. Chairman also stated, we're deeply disappointed in the decision to eliminate black leadership representation from the Kansas GOP and trust that state delegates reject this action and commit to unifying, strengthening the party. Sir, they are absolutely going to do it uh, with you talking like that. Brother, you have no fight. I'm not Republican, I'm not conservative. I probably disagree with 99.9% .9 of what you believe in, but damn it, at least act like you care or give a damn. We're disappointed, short-sighted. They're not using those types of words with you. Another leader named Ben Cicada, okay? Chair of the Kansas Republican National Hispanic Assembly said he'd been working in Republican politics for 26 years, since he was 13 years old, okay? He said this, and I quote, this is something that will set our party back dramatically. Party that I worked to build was expansive, was growing, was a party built on ideals that welcome people and encourage people, not one of fear and not one that is closed. So you need to get the hell up out of there, sir. I agree with you. You need to get the hell up out of there. All right. We had one brother on the show uh, a couple of weeks ago, black Republican at one point, elected member of city council, he switched parties. Why? Because he said he was told he could not advocate for black people in the Republican party cause they told him he could not, but they wanted him to be chairman of the Republican party. Isn't that ironic? All right, Mr. Mayor, I know you've seen this before. What are your thoughts there, brother? I'm, I'm over here laughing because that brother, like you said, had no fight. Uh, he has no fight because everything his friends and family members tell him like you're crazy for being a black Republican, how does it work? They racist. And he said, no, they're not. And now right. they, they spat yep, in that's his it. face. That's it you right there. See it. Your plat First of all, we see your platform that excludes black people, the quality of life that black people need to live and thrive. Now you say out loud the thing that we already knew. Mm -hmm. We don't care about these people. And when you said, when the article said they're trying to shape the party in his own image, my God, talk that's about right. irony. Talk, right. Get rid of everybody except for white men, because that's, in his mind, what the Republican Party stands for. And this black man, that black man standing there with that smile on his face, lacking fight. He's lacking that fight because he has no foot to stand on. And as my grandma said is, keep on living. <laughs> yeah, keep on Listen, living. Uh, to, to both of the gentlemen, you know, at, at some point you can regain your leadership back. You just may not be able to do it there. But don't let them snatch the soul that you have to advocate for people. If the methodology is no longer possible through the conservative channels, I encourage you to find another home. Mr. Mayor, always a pleasure to have you on the show, dear brother. How can people follow you, check out your great work? Yeah, we're producing content four times a week on uh, on uh, Rebel HQ, but I'm also on all social media platforms at Mundell Robinson. Always a pleasure, my friend, until next time. Peace. All right, peace. We got more on the other side, bullpen is next, stick and stay. All right, welcome back. We have a lot of show left. Let me read a few of the comments and then we will go to the bullpen. Uh, big thank you, I really appreciate that. All right, so to Chris Frederick, member for nine months, thank you. Power tends to corrupt, absolute power corrupts absolutely. Great men are almost always bad men, even when they exercise influence and not authority. C. Michael Henson, a member for 10 months, thank you. I remember many of many of stories that you share heartbreaking to watch and listen, as well as being hard to report on. But they are absolutely necessary. Keep on. Thank you. And they are necessary. And let's go to Twitch. Dissident PM, abuse of authority should make you ineligible for ever being a law enforcement officer again. That's right, it's a position of public trust that you violated. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. To the bullpen. 
in the bullpen today, we have Ms. Miranda Spent, all right, a policy associate at the Wisconsin Institute for Law and Liberty in Milwaukee. And she earned a BA in political science and economics from Marquette University and pursuing a master's in public administration. Good luck to you in that pursuit. That's a very noble pursuit. All right. Welcome to Indisputable. How are you? I'm good. Thank you so much for having me on. How are you? Doing quite well. We're going to chop it up about Donald Trump, his previous past performances, especially that on CNN, and how this translates to either A, policy or B, popularity within the Republican Party. I don't want to presume what you know or believe about Trump and his current chances. So if you would opine, I would then respond. Mm-hmm. So I think I want to start by saying that I don't want to defend what um, Donald Trump was saying during the CNN town hall. I don't agree with a lot of the things with the name calling. Um, and I do think it's worth talking about how the backlash that CNN has been getting for even having Trump on the platform. I think that that will eventually backfire um, on what they're trying to do. It seems to be um, tipped in the line of censorship in my opinion. And I don't think that will um, go over very well with conservative voters. And I think that that might just fan the flames of his popularity even more. Let me ask you a question when you say it is censorship. What is your definition of censorship? I suppose it would be um, purposefully trying to filter or suppress certain viewpoints or people's voices. Do you consider Governor Ron DeSantis of Florida banning books in African American studies and banning books that are connected to the story of either um, Harriet Tubman or even Dr. King? Do you think the banning of those books is the same thing as censorship in your description? Well, my understanding of the situation in Florida is that um, these aren't necessarily book bans. It's about making sure that the books that are being put in classrooms are appropriate and age appropriate. And I think that um, that's a a noble pursuit. I don't think it's about banning specific stories outright um, in the way you described. Are you aware of what books have been banned and what stories they contain? Um, No, not in Florida. All right, Uh, I am. So I would encourage you before you answer the question with such conclusive um, opinion that you at least know what is being banned, okay? Um, So let's talk about censorship. Censorship is legal in the context of private industry. Uh, I don't have to bring people on my show, I choose to. And if I chose not to, that is not censorship in the context of constitution. And that's usually how it is offered. For example, um, it was Donald Trump who filed a lawsuit, ironically against um, Twitter and others saying that they were violating his freedom of speech. Well, the constitution is clear. Censorship is only even permissible as it relates to government silencing an opponent per se, right? So if you have a political opinion, that's contrary to what the government believes, the government cannot penalize you. Is my reading of the constitution and the word censorship incorrect there? No, you're absolutely right. And when I, I suppose when I say censorship, it says that doesn't mean that they're not allowed to do that. They're okay. obviously a private company. Um, I'm not saying that they shouldn't do that. If CNN were to say that in the future, they don't want to give Trump a live audience or they want to um, have, provide longer time so that they can fact check him more often. They're absolutely in the right to do that. My point is to say that by doing that, I think they're um, fanning the flames of the distrust that conservatives and the American public in general has of the media. They're allowed to do that, absolutely. But to say that Trump is dangerous, that he shouldn't be given prime time live airtime, that um, people are going to see that and they're going to think, well, they don't, they, there's a reason they are purposefully trying to filter how I'm how I'm seeing this candidate. They're not letting me get okay. the full story the way that, that I want to know it. And to them, I think to most people who at least Trump supporters, I think that that would only make the situation worse. They're not, oh. um, yeah, go ahead. Okay. So I'm gonna get to the Trump and violence statement in a minute. Let me first address this. So you clearly understand what government censorship is and it's antithetical to the constitution, it's against the law. 
All right, Constitution says it's a no-no. Just because a person or maybe even a company or CEO, if they offer something that's in disagreement to the government, the government cannot then retaliate to punish that individual. Am I correct so far, Ms. Spent? Yes. Okay, back to Ron DeSatan in Florida. He decides because Disney said something, the CEO of Disney said something he didn't like. He decides to launch a legislative campaign in order to pass a law to create a tax burden for Disney that Disney did not have before the statement was made. And he clearly said during a press conference, it was in direct response to Disney being critical of the policies of DeSantis. Is that not a de facto violation of what the Constitution says should never happen? Um, I think I would agree with you on that. I, I don't agree with Ron DeSantis's actions against Disney. Obviously, they're a private company allowed to do those things. And um, he retaliated because of um, what they said they believe. So yeah, I, you're right on that front. All right, let's go to Trump. And I appreciate the concession there. Let's go to Trump and the idea of him not being violent. So I get your context, I understand. You're basically saying, listen, um, all of the rhetoric about Donald Trump and him being dangerous is probably going to end up being more problematic than anything else. And let me submit this to you. It was CNN who said Donald Trump lied about the election. It was CNN who said Donald Trump caused the insurrection. It was CNN who conclusively said Donald Trump was a tyrant, bad for the country. Fox News said it too, they just said it to each other. They just lied to the audience, all right? So if you have offered this to your audience, your CNN, if you've told your audience for years, Donald Trump is bad for America. Donald Trump tried to create um, an insurrection or did create an insurrection to overturn the government. Uh, he's violent, he's dangerous, etc. If you've gone on record and said that, do you not find it somewhat at least, I don't know, disrespectful to the audience to then invite the same man after he gets convicted of sexual assault to your show? You don't think that's irresponsible? You don't understand why people would have an issue with that? Well, I understand why people would have an issue with it. But to say that it's irresponsible, I don't think that's true. I think that um, media has a responsibility to make sure that people have all the information in front of them. They're telling you that Trump is violent, that he's dangerous, he's a threat to democracy. So then show us, put him on a stage, which is what they did, and ask yeah. him all the where he gave those answers, and that's exactly what I think they did a good job of asking him questions where he they, he, they made him look like that. So they're the, giving him the truth. The commentator, she tried, but the format was wrong in my opinion. Um, I bring people all the time on my show that have different political opinions like yourself. You and I are not perfectly aligned uh, ideologically, and we're not, we don't have to be, all right? It's not a requirement to have that conversation. But if I really believed that you were a tyrant and you were going to overthrow, overthrow the government, you have the power to do so. Uh, and I've said this for years, and, and you just got convicted of sexually abusing a human being, a woman, just got convicted by a jury of this, I'm not platforming you. And if for some reason I ever do platform you, I'm doing it to deal with you. I'm not doing it to give you an interview, I'm doing it so you can be dealt with. That would be the difference. And I think that's what people expected, especially given the buildup of CNN um, against Trump tactics for so many years. Do you understand that point? I do. I suppose it's just that, um, I mean, he's a presidential candidate. He This was meant to be a town hall that was him speaking directly to the voters. I mean, I do think that um, Caitlin Collins, I believe her name, she did yeah. a great job, I think. She did. Overall. Um, trying to fact check him as much as she could, asking him questions. But he lies too much. He no, lies too I, much. I agree. Okay. <laughs> I agree. All right. <laughs> yeah. Um, but again, I think that it's, you know, people have the right to be upset if that's that's how they feel. I do think it's interesting that CNN invited him on, but again, I think that's that's journalist integrity. You know, he he's the former president. He's a he's a current presidential candidate, and yeah. I. Think you know, it's media's job to make sure that people are giving are getting information. All right, well, listen, I believe CNN did for ratings and nothing more. All right, I appreciate you being on the show. I hope you come back, good luck to you in your master studies, okay? Thank you so much, thank you for having me on. Absolutely, all right, remember, take care of yourself, take care of each other, take care of the planet. Remember the truth is always indisputable.